Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm a year five MD-PhD student from the University of Ottawa. And for this video, I'll be talking a bit more about MD-PhD programs. As always, this video is with the community of support, which is a great resource for students to identify in underrepresented groups in healthcare, to connect with others in the field, and kind of help uh, receive some guidance on their applications. So if that's of interest, check out the links in the description box below. So my intention with this video is to just talk about MEPHD programs a little bit more. I think it's a bit underappreciated how there's a lot of what we call MD plus opportunities out there. So that can include MD PhD, there could be MD Masters as well, and there's also MD MBA. I'll be talking about uh, MD PhD because that's really what I know about <laughs> or have experience in. Um, but I should also add that I am a single MD PhD student going to a single Canadian medical school. So whatever I say in this video is really just my opinions and perspectives. Other people can certainly disagree, and I think it just highlights the importance of you know looking into these schools and, and programs yourself, as well as talking to other students as well. So first important question is what exactly is an MD PhD program? Um, and it's an extended program where you get some protected time to do a PhD. Normally, med school would be three to four years, depending on the school. And MD PhD programs are seven to nine years, again, depending on the school. The uh, varying length of time can sometimes come down to that PhD and how long it takes to, to finish. In terms of the program structure, that can also vary a lot by school. So some schools will have you start off with the MD, some will have you start off with the PhD, some will give you a very continuous PhD experience, some will uh, integrate some clinical work into your PhD as well, and clinical learning into your PhD time. So um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It just comes down to personal preference and what students like to see in their training. I should also note that if your intention is to do an MD and a PhD, an MD PhD program is by no means the only way to go about doing it. You can do a PhD before you start medical school. You can do a PhD um, after the bulk of all your medical training when you are closer to being or are a staff physician. Um, you can also do what we call the clinician investigator program, which is um, basically a chance to do a PhD or, or master's degree during your residency. And you get that protected time again to do that graduate degree. Um, so there's some pros and cons to each avenue. Um, often it can, come, it can come down to just what opportunities present themselves to you at a given moment in time. Um, but certainly like there's a lot of options out there to complete both a medical degree as well as a graduate degree. Given how long an MD PhD program is, um, it wouldn't be unreasonable to ask why on earth would you apply to this program in the first place? If we talk about the benefit of getting an MD and a PhD, um, there's a couple ways to think about it. There's a big picture view that we think of um, where it's that there's a research world and there's a, a clinical or medical world and there's nuances in each and sometimes there's miscommunication that can happen when those two worlds try to communicate to one another. When you have an MD PhD, you have training in both and you're kind of wearing both hats there and um, you're really able to appreciate those nuances and help merge those two worlds together in your career. So um, often that can look like, um, for example, being a physician and seeing problems in your practice that your patients encounter and wanting to find solutions to that. So you direct your research to help address those problems. And then from whatever happens from your research or whatever research things you're reading um, to stay up to date on the research world, you are applying to your clinical practice as well. So. Um, that's one way to look at it. There's also the very career specific way where um, often MD PhDs we talk about working and we would talk about working in an academic institution or academic hospital um, as a clinician scientist. So clinician scientist, you're basically breaking up your time um, between your clinical duties, possibly seeing patients depending on the field you're in. Um, and also doing research as well. That said, if you're doing an MD PhD, that's not the only career option out there. There are MD PhDs who do consultant work. There are MD PhDs who do their own startup and become an entrepreneur. And it comes down to the fact that the PhD offers a lot of um, a lot of training in these transferable skills. So you're basically going to be able to learn how to identify problems, how to come up with methods to test your hypotheses, how to um, slowly form solutions to address the problems you identify, 
how do you interpret results things like that so those are all really valuable no matter what um, career you're in um, so don't feel limited when you're doing an MD PhD that you can only work in an academic hospital there's definitely other options open to you as well to do the MD PhD program specifically um, it can come down to a few different reasons so you may decide that um, working on those research skills earlier could be beneficial for you rather than to wait until you do most of your medical training. Um, also, depending on the program, there can be a bit of financial incentive to do an MD-PhD versus doing a graduate degree before medical school or way after medical school. Um, because often schools will provide a little bit of a step in to help offset some costs. So let's say you've thought about you know why you apply for an MD PhD and you think you're gonna go for it. Now it comes down to what schools to apply to. And normally for a medical school, I would say that whatever school people qualify for, if they are able to, to definitely apply broadly. For MD PhD programs, I'd actually caution to be more selective because the program's longer and you need to make sure that you're gonna be pretty satisfied wherever you're at. So um, you know, there's three things to consider and, and I would encourage people to be a bit selective because of that. One thing to think about is the program structure, as I mentioned. If you feel like you're going to have a very strong preference for how you envision your training, take that into account and make sure to look into how schools format the MD-PhD program. Another thing is to think about um, the graduate programs offered under MD-PhD. Uh, if you're thinking of doing something in biomedical or medical sciences, you'll probably be fine, and a lot of schools will offer that under MD-PhD, I would believe, as a default. Um, but it can get trickier if you would like to do a PhD in the humanities or in education, for example, um, because not every school offer that. So you have to make sure that wherever you apply, there's a graduate program as well as labs and research groups that you would feel comfortable joining. Another thing, as I mentioned, is the funding. So because the program can be stressful, um, it certainly helps if there's a financial stipend involved to help offset at least the financial stress um, and make the experience a little bit more pleasant for students. And this is especially if you find yourself um, as someone who could be tight on funds. Um, there's no shame in making sure that you apply to programs with adequate funding for students. Like that's what definitely add to the student experience. Um, so seriously take into account if it's something that's going to be important for you. And then another thing I would just say is talk to students in the school for that greater view of the student experience. Um, definitely talk to MD-PhD students, figure out are they happy in the program, did they feel well supported. I can imagine um, in a time like now with the pandemic, you can easily ask how did the school respond to the pandemic and how did they support students during the pandemic because that would have added stress to your training. Um, and again, there's no shame in making sure that students are happy because um, it's a long program and you want to make sure that the school has been well prepared to take care of its students. You might also want to ask to see if students were generally on time um, to finish their degree. I know we talk about um, making sure to have a quality PhD and you need to take as much time as you need for that and by no means am I discounting that. That is true and that is important. Um, but it's also known that if you feel like you're being kept too long in a MD-PhD program and held back year after year after year, um, it can cause burnout and that will negatively impact your um, training as well as your eventual career um, motivations. So it's important to just see, you know, if students face roadblocks, do they at least have support systems in place to help, you know, guide them in the correct direction and help them stay relatively on track. So if you're thinking of applying, next to think about is the requirements. And, you know, it's going to vary school to school in terms of what you need and how to apply. Um, but generally, you're basically going to have to qualify for the MD program at each school, as well as any graduate programs offered under the MD PhD program. Um, so you have to make sure and look into the admissions websites to get those details down. I will also say it's important to know, you know, a common question I get asked is, if I apply for MD PhD, does this hurt my MD application at all if it doesn't go well? And that's not the case. So the way it works is you're going to apply for the MD program. And then you're also going to check off saying you're going to apply for the MD PhD program, depending on what kind of system each school uses. Um, and you're basically going to attach additional materials for the MD PhD program, as well as doing the basic MD application. And the way you're evaluated is you'll first be looked among the MD PhD applicant pool. 
if things don't work out for you, whether at the interview stage um, or at the final decision stage, your application will be put back to the MD only pool and you'll be reassessed there. So you'll never miss out on applying for an MD PhD uh, program. The only thing you'll lose really is the time and effort you spent on those extra materials for your application, but that's it. I'll also add another thing um, quickly is references from your PhD. I think often people freak out because they'll read something like needing some MD letters and then you need some MD PhD letters and people think they need to know at least five different people to get uh, letters from. And that's usually not the case. I would say to definitely read the fine print and double check. But usually you can have, say, your PI write you an MD letter as well as an MD PhD letter. It'll look different. There'll be different formats that the schools will want, um, but they can usually come from the same person. Next thing I talk about is how to be competitive for an MD PhD application. So um, generally there's some parameters we would think about. There's the academics. So academics is your GPA and any awards you've received. There's also your extracurriculars and any leadership opportunities in those extracurriculars. And finally, research potential. So research potential is your past research and also the research you would envision doing um, in an MD PhD program and beyond. So um, for the past research experience, I mean, normally we would say that um, doing research to apply for an MD only program um, would not be a requirement and that still stands. But for an MD PhD, you can imagine it's a little bit more mandatory. Um, but it's really for the applicant's benefit because if you have that research experience and you know the ups and downs and how to navigate that, it instills some confidence that you know what you're getting yourself into. What I will say though is if the concern is, oh, in my research experience, I need to have a first author publication, that's often, I would say, not the case. Um, first author pubs can help, they will never hurt your application. But um, to say the requirement is, is too strict of a, of a statement to make. So I would say what's important with your past research experience is to know how to talk about it. Know how to talk about it using um, terminology that's common for the field you're in, but also learning how to communicate it using layperson language. And again, this is to highlight how often we communicate things in research, whether it's through presentations or manuscripts or grant writing or news articles, um, you're always gonna be talking about your work. So it's important to have that skill ready and, and to showcase it. When talking about previous research experience, you also wanna talk about your research impact. So any work that you've done, the results of it, how does it fit into the bigger scheme of things? And what did it change or um, what did it add to our knowledge? You'll also want to um, be able to talk about times that you took initiative, times that you had to troubleshoot, how did you troubleshoot, um, things like that. Uh, those are all really common stories you should have prepared and ready to talk about either in the app or in the interview. And then what also falls under research potential is the future research you like to do. So this is where you're going to do some homework and you're going to look into what each institution is known for, what's the ongoing work that they're doing, um, what uh, uh, programs are offered, what labs you might be interested in joining or research groups you might be interested in joining. Basically being able to talk about if you go to a certain school, where do you see yourself? Um, and it just instills some confidence from the school's perspective that, again, you've done your homework, you know what you're getting yourself into, and you're going to be pretty satisfied going to their school. Um, and then as a bonus, uh, for the research side of things, you may also just want to be able to read up on and talk about some general areas of research interest that are related to your own work. So whether it's in the uh, current news or whether it's something that your institution is known for, um, it couldn't hurt to kind of brush up on that so that if they ask you about, you know, tangential research topics, you might be able to still carry the conversation and contribute to that. So with that, that is a very brief primer of MD PhD programs. If you're interested in knowing more, feel free to leave some questions in the comments down below. You can also check out the MD PhD section in the unofficial guide to Canadian medical schools, which is found online. And you can also check out the Clinician Investigator Trainee Association of Canada, um, or CTAC, where we often highlight trainees at different stages of their um, education. And you can kind of see what kind of work they're doing and, and learn a little bit more about the programs available in Canada. 
So with that, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Community of Support and we'll see you next time.